Oh, we're going live. Oh my goodness, I just pressed accidentally. Um, well, so it's a time anyway, so yeah, it's perfect timing. So we're going live on YouTube instead of on on Facebook, just because. <laughs> yeah. And um, so that means we don't then have to. So can you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Yvette's just doing stuff. And then is it possible to share it on Facebook, do you think? A link on Facebook of the live on YouTube? I wonder if that's possible. Well, Yvette's got, that's why Yvette's here, because she's if that's possible. Setting up your meeting on YouTube. Oh dear, it's a line and it's stopped. It's one of those ticky top lines, whatever. It's progress lines and it's stopped. So we'll see. If not, we'll just record a chat. On my Zoom page, it says, it says live on YouTube. It implies that we're actually live, so we better pretend that we're live. We'll just, we'll just chat. We'll just keep chatting. So okay. in case we're live, which we're not quite sure if we are or not, this is the first live we've ever done on YouTube. We've done some lives on Facebook, and this is the first live ever on YouTube. So what we're doing here is this is a, a, a meeting between Shane Scott in Australia, who is a, a maths teacher. He's not just any old maths teacher and he, he won't really admit it himself. But he's really creative. He's always looking for the ways to engage learners. And one of the, one of the, the big problem, why should I bother to learn this? It means nothing. I'll never use it. Well, Shane Scott is the man, the teacher. Oh my goodness, we are actually live. <laughs> the man, we are live. The man, the teacher who, who constantly looks for ways to make it relevant and real in real life. Now, this session is, is aimed at parents. But if you come across this, Yvette over here is our technical person, and she is, hello, there's Yvette. So she's going to add a title to it. So if somebody's searching for it or something, they find it and they can, um, um, because this is our first time, so we're not, we haven't publicized it or anything. But hopefully, Shane is going to be doing this on a regular basis, um, have a regular feature in some way, somehow. And so, so just to let you know who we are, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Caroline Ainsley from Bubbly Maths. Uh, started, I was an electronic engineer, started 15 years, well, 16 years ago, got a bee in my bonnet, had an epiphany that I wanted to make help children that hated maths learn to love it. And so my vision, Bubbly Maths came out of that. Where's Bubbly Maths? It's on here somewhere. Oh, it's disappeared. Bubbly Maths came out of that. And, um, and my vision is that every child on earth should enjoy learning, love, should love learning and enjoy mathematics. And, and that every child, and, and, the, and that we, we, our systems help children stop hating and start loving math, stop fearing, start loving math, stop being anxious and start loving it. And you know what? If the parents are part of that process, then the parents can also stop hating, stop, stop being anxious about and start loving math. So, our contribution during these incredible times, and we're going to actually continue it. Now we've started, we, this will actually continue on an ongoing basis with all the wonderful maths um, enthusiasts around the world. Um, and I'm going to call teachers, everybody's going to be a maths enthusiast, she ain't changed. You've just been graduated to being a maths enthusiast as well as a maths specialist. Um, so we're going to, we're, basically we're here with Shane, who's now going to introduce us. <laughs> I'm going to take a back, I'm going to step back, give him the frame. And um, and I'm going to start recording. Oh, I should have started recording this before. I'm going to record it, record yeah, to the cloud, and I'm going to be smaller. And Shane, please tell us about yourself and why you're so passionate about maths. Well, hello everyone. It's it's great to see you, and I'm extremely flattered that Caroline's invited me. I've been teaching maths since 2000, and for me. Well, let me tell you what maths is not. I'm actually going to show you what maths is not. Maths is not one of these. These are textbooks. You know, schools are full of textbooks. Hold it still for a second, maths. Shane. Can you just hold it still for a moment? Yep. Because when you oh. move it, it, it just goes blurry. So you just have to think. All right. It's not that I really needed you to see what the textbook is. <laughs> oh, well, it's but, called maths you know, in focus, so we should really have it in focus. <laughs> 
very good. I'm actually one of the co-authors of this, so that was a bit of a plug. Um, maths is not that, and, and mathematics has a really bad reputation because, for example, if we taught woodwork the way we teach mathematics, we'd spend a week showing students how to hammer a nail into a piece of wood. And then we'd spend another week teaching them how to saw a piece of wood in half. And we'd do this for four to five years. Just this is this tool, this is that tool. And, and we never see what it's really for. And, and unfortunately, because in most countries we're given a curriculum and we've got to teach all these things, we, we don't see the forest for the trees. And, and I like to bring back what maths is really for. And, and I guess one of my passions is wherever I go, I'm, I'm looking at where is the maths in that. But having said that, just today, I was introduced to a TED talk by Grant Sanderson. And um, he had the most interesting comment to say. And I'm going to say it in reverse. And can I make apologies to all the Harry Potter fans because I'm not very good. But if I was to say, oh, I'm not going to get one of them right, but, you know, Leviticus Leviosa, <laughs> what does that mean? Where am I ever going to use that? Where am I ever going to use any single thing that I read or watch in Harry Potter? Okay, stop, stop, because I've got to interrupt and tell them about the fact that when we, we met in England, when Shane came to a maths conference in England, and he said he wanted to go to Bletchley Park. So I made it my business to make sure that he got to Bletchley Park, which isn't that easy to do if you're a tourist. And um, we did use it because we didn't just go to Bletchley Park. We also went to the mandatory Harry Potter shop. So we do have a use for it. So you can't say we don't. <laughs> yeah, but, but where would we use that in real life? And the answer is we don't. And that's okay yeah. because it's the intrinsic enjoyment we get of watching movies like Harry Potter. And for some mathematics, there is pure intrinsic value. It doesn't have to be a real world application. And that's just what I saw today. But for all the things that I teach from year seven, they're 12 to 13 year olds, to year 12, which is our final year of school, and they're 17 to 18 year olds. Whatever I teach, I like to say, and here is the application to the real world. Now, some things are very clear, like if you're doing trigonometry, you can relate that to global positioning satellites, finding the heights of buildings. There's lots and lots of things. But can you do that for algebra? And, and I'm going to say, as a bit of a spoiler, Algebra is one of the things I'm going to talk about today because where our target is, is the parents and how they can help their students. And algebra is that poor unfortunate that, you know, whenever you come across a child, if you're not a maths teacher and they go, oh, I'm at school, I'm year eight. And the comment is, oh, wait till you learn algebra. That's really hard. And and it's a really bad, undeserved reputation because it needs to be translated to English. And that's what I'm going to do a little bit later. Our year six students in primary school, Shane, are learning algebra with A, B, yeah, look, and C's. They, we do it in primary school in our schools, but it's no. a, a little bit more like algebra by stealth. And it's not yeah, the not, formalistic language. Yeah, not so much. It's A, equals, a plus B equals C and using that and it's, yeah, it's yeah. Without the, yeah, but yes, it's also, so, done, it's also done stealthily. Now, the first thing I'd like to show you is, is um, some resources that I think parents are going to need. And I want to give you the quick story about this. In Sydney, we have a, a, a young guy called Eddie Wu. And the story goes that um, he had a class and one of the students in his class got very, very ill and was in hospital. And um, Eddie's a lovely man. And, and the student just did not want to miss his classes. And so Eddie started recording all of his classes. 
and it just snowballs. And he has a large number of hits on his website. And um, I'm going to give you an apology because I'm going to use the share screen a little bit to show you. And I'll be awkward getting back, but I will get back so I can see you again. So I'm going to share my screen if I can do this the right way. Oh, yes, it's going to be that one. Um, and this is Eddie Wu. So I'm not sure if you can see my mouse moving, but that's Eddie Wu. And if I go to videos, and let's say that I wanted to introduce trigonometry. So if I had, say, a 15 or 16 year old and, and they were going to do, they had to teach to learn trigonometry at home. I mean, you know, I think that's a big ask of parents to be able to just pick it up out of the blue and suddenly do trigonometry. But here's a guy who's done it all for you. And, and he's made them in nice five to 10 minute videos, say, sit down, let's watch this. How do you do it? Well, you go to videos, you click on the um, magnifying glass for search, and you, you type in introducing trigonometry. And up comes a whole list of things, and he's even numbered some. So you can say, all right, so let's spend a little bit of time watching this. And he's got trigonometry, calculus, integration. Um, there's a whole lot of secondary math that I would suggest would be suitable for what we call year nine, um, all the way up to um, the final year of high school. And so then you get someone who's passionate about his subject and you can sit down almost if you were a student yourself with your son and daughter or just have your son and daughter watch it on their own and, and you're not sweating on my godfather, how am I going to learn calculus? I don't get it. I never did it at school or I did it at school 20 years ago. I can't remember it. So that's going to be a resource that people in the UK might not have. And so, you know, in this day and age, of the world becoming so small with resources, here's a resource from down under that I've personally used because we're in the same boat now. We have to prepare online lessons and I don't have the time to record every lesson that I wanna do, but these are already made for me. And, and Eddie's someone who I personally trust and, and so, and you can watch him. There's no fee there available to everyone and you can say yes i like him or no i don't the other thing i did we'll, we'll put um, a link in so that yeah Eddie Wu's um, channel for people to to watch and as you say a session yeah. themselves and, that could be and really the easy. other thing that i did that you know we don't didn't have years ago is you know we've got this internet and so for my junior classes i would say right this is the topic i'm going to teach and yet I said, read these pages of the book, but that is by no means what I would use to teach someone. And so then I did a quick search on the internet, typed in the topic and up comes a whole list of videos. And I could say, oh, this one looks good. Now I put my hand up and say, I did go on you know, the front picture. I don't want someone who's just gonna show me a whiteboard and talk. Yeah, I'd rather see something a bit more dynamical, but when I had no choice, that's what I, I did. So that's what we're trying to do is one of the things in Australia to compensate for our students not being at school. Um, at this point in time, just to, to say something, our school is planning in the long run to use Zoom for, for learning but we can't do that yet because of child protection um, laws and understanding. So until that gets ironed out, we're actually prevented from doing Zoom classes. Some schools are still doing it anyway, and that's their choice, but um, we've been offered protection to not do it. And um, that, that's our status quo. So I thought I wanted to show you that um, as a resource. I hadn't thought about First that as a problem for, for Zoom, doing Zoom to your classes. 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, that's where we're at is that. So um, that's my bit about resources. So let's get into the bane of everyone's existence or, or the so-called bane, and, and that's algebra. And um, I'm going to be the first person to say, geez, it's got a shoddy reputation. And, you know, uh, and I'm going to use Caroline as the voice at the other end here. And, and I'm going to start you with a very quick and simple algebra lesson. And uh, forgive my accent, but um, it's really nice. It's a great little, um, uh, what do they call it, curtain raise. It's not that word, but it's something anyway. So if I have Q and I add 2Q to that, I end up with 3Q. So Q plus 2Q is 3Q. And so, so now I'm going to ask you. That is the question. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you the question now. What's 3Q plus 7Q? Okay, that's 10Q. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Some people get it, some people don't. But that's, that's the fun of the game. Um, you know, that's because I speak Danish. In Denmark, they'd say thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Uh, it's a nice little um, icebreaker. That's the word I was looking for. So, you know, algebra is, is really strange because we do in English every day what we want to do in algebra, but it somehow gets people think, Oh, algebra is hard, therefore I must be doing something more difficult than what I actually want to do. So let, let's have a look at a little example. Um, I'm a very different Australian, I guess, because you know Australians are very good with cricket um, because we, we're still holding the ashes at the moment. But um, my younger son and I are big baseball fans. So, you know, I thought I'd hold up three baseballs. And, and you could, well, and if I got two really large dice here, and I put these together. Well, I'm going to change so, the screen. Okay, go. Yep. So I sort of put these together. You can see in my hands, I've got three baseballs and two dice. I don't have five baseball dice. You know, you don't want to say that in English. If I go, oh, I've got two baseballs and I'm going to add another one, I don't suddenly get three baseballs squared. It's still three baseballs. And um, one of the things that, that I really push in language is like if I said, what's two baseballs plus one baseball, kids go three. And of course they, what? A big three, where's this big three? It's not three. Now the problem is, I know they mean three baseballs, they know they mean three, three baseballs, but because they're not using their language, they're not seeing the algebra. So I force them to say three baseballs. Now it's only a little jump to say 2B plus B is 3B. Is that a problem with that? It's just a little jump. I can't be bothered saying the whole word baseball because I'm a mathematician. And we like to be lazy with our writing. And, and so when we talk about these X's and Y's and A's and B's, it's really just, I want to say a number whose value I don't know and I can't be bothered writing it down. And so I just use a single letter to represent it. As a matter of fact, um, I'm not quite sure how the syntax works in the UK, but when we use a letter, there's two different words that we say. We either say it's a pronumeral or a variable. Um, what, do you use those words? I haven't a clue, not I'm sure. afraid. I'm okay. not a teacher. So, I don't teach maths formally. I make maths fun and I don't sure. have a clue. So, I don't remember. So ever let's understand anything. what these words are. If I use the word variable, it means a letter that could be a number, but I can change what that number is. A variable, I might be yes. Allowing it to have different numbers. A variable but, is, yeah, we use that. What about this word pronumeral? Let's, let's understand what the actual word is. So let's take a pause for a second. 
what would be in the subject of English, what would be the English word that would sound the most like pronumeral? Pronoun. Pronoun. And and what's a pronoun? A pronoun is <laughs> now you're testing my grammar. No, I'm, <laughs> a pronoun is, okay. a, is a word that comes before a noun. <laughs> Oh, no, that's that's no. an adjective. But I don't a pronoun, know. The answer is I don't know that okay. either. <laughs> a pronoun is a word that we use to replace a noun. So okay. It, he, she, they. So okay. they're words we use to replace a noun. And in maths, we have exactly the same. A pronumeral. Is, is a, a letter that, that, we use that replaces a number. Replaces a number. Yay. And I don't like to use in the definition, I don't like to use the word letter because I like oh. to use the word symbol, symbol because I could draw a cow if I wanted to. It's just that letters are quick and easy to write. And that's why we use them. We're trying to make our life easy. So for the parents, let me tell you who your biggest ally is going to be for mathematics. And, and I'm not getting any commission for this. I want you to understand this. But my biggest um, aid is McDonald's. Because everyone knows about McDonald's. And yet most of the algebra that I want to teach is all wrapped up in McDonald's. And all we and can I do want... is dream about McDonald's right now. Yeah, well, you can still get, can you still get takeaway over there? No, that's just wrong. Takeaway McDonald's is just wrong. <laughs> now we've got drive through. We get drive through here. Uh, we, we, oh, so. oh, well, I'm not going out, so I, I wouldn't know. But yes, we can get delivery, but I, there's just something inherently wrong. With yeah, we're, we're still allowed to go out for, you know, supplies. So, yeah. um, and, and the reason I use McDonald's, and you can use anything else that's equivalent, is because we're using the known concepts of the students. And if I talk about McDonald's, you know, everyone knows what we're going to get. If I say, if I go to McDonald's and I ask for a Big Mac meal, every student can tell me what the girl's going to put on the tray. I've got to pick some gender, so please, I'm just going to use girl because the majority of people serving at McDonald's are girls. So that's my, said, my son worked at McDonald's person. and that was good. So we know where they're going to put on the tray. So, <coughs> so if I say things like, what's two Big Macs plus three Big Macs, you know that's five Big Macs. But if I say, what's two Big Macs? and three packets of chips. You know that's got to be two Big Macs and three packets of chips. You can't say it as five of something because you understand that they're different. And so that means if we have a different letter, they must be different things. And that's why we can't combine them. So we can talk about, you know, 2x plus 3x is 5x, the same way we can say two hamburgers plus three hamburgers is five hamburgers. So what, what things would I want students to be able to do with algebra? And I would like them to be able to add and subtract like terms. Well, we can do that with the McDonald's. I've already done that. I would like them to be able to multiply and divide, and I don't have McDonald's for that one. So maybe that will be for another day when we come back. I would like them to do the things that we call factorize and expand. And um, I'm gonna give my whiteboard a go. So give, bear with me for a sec while I set it up. Yeah, while, while he's doing that, I'm just gonna get on my soapbox. So in, uh, if I see a girl at McDonald's, I choose to believe that she is a physicist at college, who's helping herself pay the bills with a part-time job, and she's going to when she when she goes off to do her masters, she'll have a grant and won't need to go to McDonald's anymore. So there you go. Think of any girl you see at McDonald's as a as a student well, a I, physicist. I, I guess I could count and say, what did, what did the Doctor of English say to the Doctor of Mathematics? Would you or, like fries with that? Would you like? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, so um, so we have two things. We have expands, and we have a thing called factorize. Okay. I'm I'm learning here, okay. by the way, too. Now, As I say, I'm not. I'm just going to just put this to the, to the parents. I'm learning here. I'm I, and I'm learning every day. And this is a. We were having a conversation last night about that that we want children to be learning every day, not just every school day, because that way they're in the habit of learning. And when they leave school, it's it's a habit. It's not like something you stop doing when you're not in school, and then you can keep doing it throughout the summer and to keep doing it on holiday and keep doing it when you leave school. So I'm just, I'm just reveling in the fact that I'm learning things here, which memory is not my forte, so I don't remember any of this from when uh, I was at school. Go, Caroline, if you, can't, if you can't see this properly, let me know. No, we, so, this is good. The only thing is when, when you move, there's blur, but that's still so we can see it clearly. Okay, so in expanding, it's really saying what you get. So if I went to McDonald's and bought five Big Mac meals, now what's in a Big Mac meal? Well, we've got a burger and we've got fries and we've got a drink. Is that all right? So five of a burger and fries and a drink. Yep. Now, if my question is, what is the girl going to put on the tray? And I do get kids say, oh, five Big Mac meals. And I say, but I want to know, what are you going to put on the tray? Well, we get five burgers. Five burgers. And we're going to get five packets of fries. And we're going to get five drinks. Now, in the real world, if I asked any child in year eight or year nine, what's five Big Mac meals, they're going to rattle that off to me. But the strange thing is, if I just presented this as a piece of algebra and say, go expand that, you'd get 5B and then you wouldn't give the five to the fries and the drinks. And then I have fun of them and say, so you're going to share the one packet of fries between five people. So taking something in brackets with a number out the front and expanding it out is what we call expanding. And I might come back just for fun of what we call a binomial expansion later on. That'll give you a good laugh. So um, let me now scrub that and make it slightly a bit different. So I need to make up a special McDonald's meal. We'll call this the, the Big Shane Meal. So in a Big Shane Meal, in a Big Shane Meal, you're going to get, well, let's be generous. We're going to have one burger and we're going to have two packets of fries. And then to make it look a little bit mathematical and, and a little bit less common sense, I have to give them two drinks so i get minus two drinks so i'm just making this up so it's now so not you quite have to give normal. mcdonald's two drinks they're going to give you yeah. one burger and two fries and you're going to give mcdonald's two drinks and i'm going to pay money for that can you imagine and you're that? going to pay money but, for that okay but this just, is just, 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 make up, just making sure i've understood the concept so you're yeah. walking into mcdonald's with two drinks that you've gone bought from KFC or something. Okay, yeah. fair, go for it. Or you can so, get a can of Coke. So let's see how this is going to work. I happen to have nine friends that are going to come to McDonald's with me. So that's going to be 10 of us. And if I get 10 of the Shane Big Mac meals, the Big Shane meals, so that's a burger and two fries, but I've got to give away two drinks for each one. So each one of you is going to walk into McDonald's with two drinks. Yeah, that's I love the way it. We're going I love this it. idea. <laughs> so, what's what's the transaction going to be apart from the money? I'm going to get ten burgers. Yep, you're going to get ten burgers. I'm going to get two fries for every person. Right. So that so. means I need two times ten, 
which is 20 fries. So plus... 20 20 packets of fries you were talking about about talking about what you're getting it's 10 packets of 20 packets of fries so 20 packets of fries fries but to complete this transaction i'm going to have to hand over 10 times 2 so minus 20 drinks okay so well we can't we can't see we can't see that last but we can't see the minus 20. there we go is that a bit better oh yes we can see the minus 20 now We're, we're, so, my, my, I might—I don't know about everybody else, but my mind is boggling about having to give McDonald's twenty. Yeah, days. I know. Can you I imagine the happened. face of the person, the server? They'd be like, "What am I supposed to do with this?" Yeah, I, love, so, I understand. What you're doing mathematical. It. My, my head is loving it. In mathematical language, the ten has been distributed to the B and the two F and the two D, or the minus two D. So that's what we would say mathematically. Is that okay? Yep. So the other one that we want to do, which we do in the real world without even thinking about it. So let's go to, oh, let's go back to McDonald's. Um, uh, the One of the latest movies they release is Frozen 2. And you all know at McDonald's when they release a movie, McDonald's chips in and they go, oh, we've got these toys and all the kids race to McDonald's because they want to get a Happy Meal and and get a toy with it. So if I had um, a group of children and we all go to McDonald's and what we find is um, on the tray, because I ordered, but I'm not going to tell you what I ordered, on the tray there is um, eight burgers. They're actually um, kids' burgers or cheese, they're cheeseburgers. So eight cheeseburgers. There is 16 uh, small packets of fries. And there is um, 24 toys. Is that okay? There's 24 toys. Right. Now, it could be that there is one very lucky and very hungry child that gets all of that. I can give them eight burgers and 16 packets of fries and 24 toys, and they'd be very happy, wouldn't they, that one child? Until they got sick. They'd be fine until they got sick. Yeah. I could have two children. And if I had two children, I'd give one child four burgers, eight packets of fries, and 12 toys. And those two kids would be happy. They have very full stomachs, but they'd be happy. There couldn't be three children, because I couldn't share this amongst three children. But there could could, be four children. You could, you could share it, but not equally. Well, no, you couldn't share, because let's pretend you wanted to. So let's just look at the burgers, right? I could take six burgers and share them between the three children. Yeah. But then I've got two burgers to share between three children. Yeah. And everyone knows that you can never cut up a burger in three ways so that all three children are happy. (laughs) Yeah. There's a difference there between cutting them up exactly and cutting them up so that all three children are happy. But this is true. (laughs) And actually, can I get you to write down a little note to say how to share um, something between two children. And I'll, I'll give you that one because it's a beautiful answer, that one. Something so, between three I, children or two children? Two, two, two children. children. Something between two okay. children. Got it? Note taken. So, could I share this tray between four people equally? Well, yeah. Each child will get two burgers. They get four fries. And they would get six toys. And they'd be pretty happy with that. I can't do six. I can't do seven. But as a matter of fact, I could do, I could share this very happily with eight children. Each child would get a burger. They'd get two packets of fries. And they would get three toys. So now let me wrap that up. 
instead of saying going up to the counter saying, can I have eight burgers, 16 fries and 24 toys? I'd never say that. What I'd say is, can I have eight of your children's Happy Meals, which happens to be a burger and two fries and three toys? Uh, you've got better Happy Meals in Australia than we have in Europe, that's for sure. Oh, no, can I say, we don't have that either. Right? <laughs> we, we've only got one toy, but I needed to get some other numbers playing around. I get so it. So you can it's, see it's, that. It's, it's a super, it's a, it's a, it's a super, super um, happy meal. Super happy meal. Yeah. So this is, this is algebra. This is what I would take several classes to teach students. Yeah. But by using McDonald's and common knowledge, knowledge that they have, yeah. I can introduce these algebra concepts. Now, I, I'd like to show you something that's a little bit trickier. And I'm doing this for only one purpose, which is to make you smile. So the next one I want to show you is similar, but um, I'm not expecting the same grade level of students to do this. And I don't even like it myself. You don't like it. Now, remember That's I easy. talked about expanding. Sometimes we have two things that are multiplied together. So yeah. instead of having just a number by my hap by my Big Mac meal, I've got something in brackets times something in brackets. Right. Now, for people who can't read my writing, this is P, this is L, this is A, and this is N. Now, the Americans have had something called an acronym called FOIL. And FOIL stands for first, outside. Side, inside last. So let's sorry, apply sorry, sorry, we didn't hear that. First, what inside last? First, first outside, outside, inside, inside, last, last. Okay. So we get the word foil. Yep. So what's the first letter in each of these brackets? It's P A. The first letter in each of the brackets. Yeah. Plus, O stands for outside. What's the outside letter in each of these brackets? P and N. Okay. P and N. What's the inside letter of each of these brackets? L. L. A. And A. And what's the last letter of each of these brackets? L and N. Now, what have we just done? Well, my plan has been foiled. Your plan has been foiled. Yeah, I, I get the plan and I get the foil, sort of. Why has it been foiled? Pan oh, you missed my joke. That's a foil reaction. Pan pan my plan has been foiled. Your, your, your plan, okay, yeah, it has been foiled, but it hasn't been foiled. Oh, yeah, I get, I kind of get it, but. It, yeah, can I say I'd never teach that to someone dry, but I just <laughs> wanted to show, because there's lots and lots of maths jokes. But anyway, yeah. so that's the only, re yeah. that is the only reason I use foil, just to do that joke. I don't do it for any yeah. other reason. Right. Okay, but anyway, I'm not here to teach, this is called binomial expansion. Oh, I'm not okay, really that's... wanting to teach you that, it's just something there. Okay. These, these are all things I know how to do. As an engineer, you have to be able to do all this um, throughout my yes. career. Um, but I don't know the names of them, like binomial expansion. So, so that's kind of cool. But okay, your plan has yeah. been foiled. All right. <laughs> okay. I'd, I'd be intrigued in, to know how you actually do teach that in, in, in a way that, that, that that's another Yeah, time. that would be another time. We can do that another time. Now, um, what I'd like to do, so that's some of the basic algebra. So you see using concrete materials, we can add like terms and take them away. And then we know the difference between what's like and what's not like. Now, for all of the things that we've been talking about, those things are called algebraic expressions. And let me show you an equivalent. 
So here we go. I'm going to make up an algebraic expression. And, and I'll show you the thing that annoys me. Here I have three baseballs and two dice. And I could have said 3B plus 2D. I could have said 2B plus D, sorry, adds B plus D. And I get all of that, which you've been able to see. Is that okay? Everyone's happy with that. It's an algebraic expression. So what we've got is saying, I have three baseballs and two dice. That's a sentence. And no one can tell me how much this baseball cost. If you say an expression, a statement, you cannot tell me how much something is. If I say they're lovely glasses you're wearing, that doesn't give me how much they cost. Okay. And that's the annoying thing because people see algebra and their brain is hardwired. It's like, oh, I've got to find what X is. And we don't. It's a statement. And we're just wanting to be able to collect like terms or factorize and, and use it like we do in everyday English. Now, if I change my problem a little bit and I say, I went to the shops, I gave over $50 and I got three baseballs and $20 change. How much did a baseball cost? Now, that's a question we could do mentally, okay? Um, but what I'm going to do, if I, I hope this works, is I'd like to walk you through a PowerPoint I made. I actually wrote a paper on teaching algebra um, to students, and I actually presented this for parents at one of the schools I was teaching. So um, give me a second to pull it up. Oh, I wonder if I can get that. No. I have to cheat here and I should have got this ready. I'm sorry I didn't do it beforehand. HCC. You did, well, you did, we did test that your screen was working. Oh yeah, but I didn't get the file up ready that I wanted oh, to do. Right, okay. We have, because we did test the technology, the technology was going to work. Uh, um, Scott, oh, I know where. So while, while Shane's pulling that up, I'll just um, fill in, if anyone, I suppose you, most of you are going to be watching this, as they say, on the replay, um, just to, um, so you will have heard the introduction. If you've just come on live, Shane is in Sydney, and he's, I've now discovered, is an author, a published author, which I didn't know, and his, but he's a secondary school teacher, and his speciality, the thing that really drives him is to make sure that the maths he teaches the students, his students, is relevant, is real and identifiable so that his students don't have that frustration and aren't blocked by that, that big question, which is, why should I bother to learn this? When will I ever use it? And Shane's, um, Shane's big thing is to make sure that they do can see the relevance of it and and to generate interest uses props that mean something to them that actually they have perhaps a, a personal attachment to the concept like mcdonald's and for and the the, um, the the tip for parents there is do the same thing find relevant um, props find relevant stories math is a language you can tell stories in maths. And if you don't know how um, and you need help, by all means, send us a message, put comments on under this, send us an email. There'll be um, an email address in the description. Uh, contact us by social media <laughs> um, and we will gladly send you links, get, give you ideas. And at the same time, in addition to that, uh, we will be doing this now that this is this 
situation that this was was one of a video in case this has been watched in 10 years hence this is a coronavirus video i don't know what you'll be calling it in 10 years time but um this is triggered thanks to the coronavirus th these are going to be ongoing we're going to be doing lives constantly um on the on the bubbly maths channel and oh dear our plan has been foiled again our, our foiled plan is back yeah. So, um, I, I questions if you, if you need help finding relevant things to help your children with and go you ready okay. oh no you said we couldn't you weren't able to do it i couldn't find my powerpoint but that's okay i still know what it is, is that so. the one you sent me yesterday no i've got it at school but anyway that's oh. all right so what i would like to do is um teach you an algorithm and i'll i'll pass this on to Caroline, she can put my PowerPoint up. So if I have a problem like this, 2x plus 3 equals 7. Now, I'd be honest with you, this is a bad question because a lot of people can look at that straight away and know that the answer is 2 because 2 times 2 is 4 and 4 plus 3 is 7. And, and I will say that the bad thing that teachers do um, is make all of these questions with really nice answers and, and we're not teaching the skill of algebra and, and the skill of solving equations. Now, I would like to be honest and most of what we call linear equations can be solved using an algorithm and different teachers and schools and textbooks have all different ways and um can you can you explain teach... what an alg algorithm is please not everybody yeah, knows well, what an algorithm. i'd like to, to say an algorithm is a set of steps you can follow without even thinking and come up with the right answer and so um so i'm so just like to... say there that is how i was taught as well so so yeah. this is and and what i've discovered as an adult since i started learning how to actually facilitate the learning of maths, which I've in the, been in the last 15 years, um, I've learned that it's not about following an algorithm. I've learned that I didn't actually understand what I was doing. I was just following an algorithm, which I knew how to do. So I knew how to solve it, but didn't necessarily understand what I'm doing. So this is what um, Shane is talking about to make sure there's understanding there, not just a system okay. to solve it. So now this time I'm using an algorithm because I want the success of being able to solve an algebraic equation. It's an equation because of this symbol right here. Because it has an equals in here, I can tell you what X is. If there was no equals, it's an algebraic expression. It's like saying, you're wearing nice glasses, okay? Now, I'd like to give you my five question test. And this is the five question test that allows you to solve equations, most of them. When you get into more difficult ones, this is not going to work, but it does it for a lot. So this is the equal sign. And just like a bridge, we have one side and the other side. And we have a special bridge in Sydney. It's called the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Oh, yes, we know it. Now, I don't know if you have any like these in London uh, or in the UK at all, but for us in Sydney, it's special because it's a toll bridge. So if you travel over it, you have to pay money to go in a particular direction. And I like to use that as part of my example. So let's understand what they are. 2, X, 3 and 7... They're things, they're like nouns, but plus and the implied multiplication that's here, they're not things, they're like verbs. That's a doing thing, isn't it? So what am I getting at? Here is my equal sign. And so I have question number one. Is, excuse me, my writing is going to get really bad here. Is X on its own. My writing's really bad here. That's a question. Is X on its own? Let's look at it. Is X the only thing 
on this side of the equal sign? And the answer is no. No, X is not on its own. Which, okay. is, which is the action? Sorry, can we just review one thing? Which is the act? You said you compared something with verbs and I, we couldn't see what you were pointing at when you said right. it. So plus yeah. is a verb because that's a doing thing, isn't it? It's a doing thing, okay. And multiply, which is right. between the two and the X, is a doing thing. So they're right. like verbs. So the so arithmetic two. operations, would I be correct in saying the arithmetic operations can be compared with verbs? Absolutely. Okay. What is stopping it? What is stopping it? Stopping it from doing what? From question. So what's question number one? Is X on a time? Yes. And the answer is no, it's not. Correct. X is not on a time right. there, is it? Yeah. So what's stopping X being on a time? Ah, what's stopping well, X being on its two own? Is. Okay. Yep. The two is. The two is stopping and the three. being on its own. The three is stopping X being on its own. One yeah. of my pet mates is, you know, I say that because they go, three. And I look at them and I wait because, well, yeah, three is, but there's more. There's two as well. And that's where we come to question three. Which one is furthest away? From X. Yeah. The three is furthest so is away. Right? X, yeah. Right? Is X on its own? No. The two is completely adjacent and the three is, is separated. Yeah. I mean, physically, you look at it. Yeah. Two is right next to it, but three is furthest away, isn't it? Physically. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, which is furthest away? The three. Question number four. What mathematical... Operation. <laughs> I'll be putting um just Isn't so you know, I'll be putting um uh, uh, subtitles on these so you can see them. Yeah. What math what what mathematical operation is this three doing? Well it's doing plus, isn't it? Yeah. Can you see that plus? It's plusing. And question five, I'm gonna really annotate this. Not lost my pen. And question five is what is the opposite? The opposite of plus what three. Is the opposite. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now I actually write with what is the opposite operation? So let's quickly go through these questions again. Is X on its own? No. What's stopping it? The two and the three. Which one is furthest away? The three. What's that three doing? It's plusing. What's the opposite of plus? Minus. So what I'm going to do is take this three. It's going to travel over the equals bridge. But the toll it has to pay is to do the opposite of what it was. So when the three comes over to this side, instead of being plus three, it's going to be minus three. Let me stick that in there now. Let me get rid of my words. So my next line of work that I would make my students do is write two X, because I'm not touching that. And then my equals, and then my seven, because that's already there. And then my minus three. So the three has gone over to the other side as a minus. And now I'm going to work that out. I can clean it up. This says that 2x is equal to 4. Now let's look for a second. I started here and I've ended up here. And this looks better than that. So now I'm here. And I'm going to ask those five questions again. Is X on its own? No. What's stopping it being on its own? The two. What's that two doing? Well, it's multiplying, isn't it? And what's the opposite of multiply? Divide. So this two is going to go over to the other side as a divided by. Let's do that. X equals four divided by 
Two. I know what four divided by two is. It's two. So I get here. Is X on its own? Yes, it is. And that's the answer. So these five questions are going to get you to the answer. Now, is this a good example? Well, it's good because it shows the mechanics of what we're going to do, but it's not good because I already knew the answer before I started, because this is a very simple question. But I picked this because I want you to see how it works. So let's pick a harder one. Let's have 3x over 5 minus 2 equals 7. I've got no idea. I just made that up. So let's go through our questions. And I want to pause at the end of question two. Is x on its own? The answer is no. What's stopping it? 3, 5 and two, all the things that are on this side. Which thing is furthest away? Well, the two is. I wanna pause there for a moment because let's think about this. If I did this algebra true to form, it wouldn't matter what I'd pick. But if I was a year eight or nine student, and I picked the wrong one to do first, I would bet my bottom dollar as a teacher that they wouldn't do it correctly. So the important thing is really to identify what is the first number that I want to move. Because if you move this first, you would stuff all those numbers up. So my story that comes from the five questions is there to help me to pick What's the right one to move first? And so asking which is furthest away from the X gives me the clue. The two is. What is that two doing? It's subtracting. And what's the opposite of subtract? It's to add. So let's do that. So I get 3X over 5 equals 7 plus 2. And that means 3x over 5 equals 9. Well, gee, that looks better than that already, doesn't it? So we're making progress. Is x on its own? No. What's stopping it? The 3 and the 5. Which one's furthest away? Well, I'm going to say the 5. What's that 5 doing? It's dividing. And what's the opposite of dividing? Multiply. So 3x equals 9 times 5. And that means that 3x equals 45. Is x on its own? No. What's stopping it? 3. What's that 3 doing? Multiplying. We What's the opposite of multiply? We, shape we can't see. We, yeah, that's okay. I'm going to go up to the yeah. up here anyway. We can't see that. So what's the opposite question. of multiply? Yeah. Divide. So that's going to be x equals 45. And we can't see that either. We can't see that okay. either. Is that better? Yep. Okay. So x equals 45 divided by 3. And that means x equals 15. So I was able to get this answer without even thinking, just asking those five questions each time. Okay. And when my answer is, is X on its own? Yes, I've got the answer. Yeah. Now, I, I will be honest, it takes a bit of practice to get used to that because when you start off with questions that kids can see and know the answer straight away, they don't get drilled in this process. 
And yeah. I'll be honest yeah. with you, I wasn't expecting a nice answer like 15. <laughs> I just threw some numbers yeah. together. I was surprised, yeah. In myself that it was a nice whole number. I try to avoid that because I don't want them to be able to think what the answer is before they do the work. Yeah. So it's nice to throw not nice answers at them. So, now, so I, I've got this more expanded in a PowerPoint, and I'll pass that on to you tomorrow. Okay, that'll be um, great. And I'll put it on as a... Or as... not tomorrow, Thursday, and um, you can then link that. And I'm happy for you to link that in. And as a matter of fact, just as a little brag, um, this is actually what I presented at Big Me 8 or 7. Anyway, Big Me in 2010. I think that might have been seven. So um, there you have it. So, so I have a question my, for you now. I have a question yeah. for you. How do you make that relevant to children, to real life? Oh, okay. And, and that's more in my PowerPoint because I, ah. I mean, I've tried to cut this back in time. But okay. this here, as you see, is absolutely not relevant. But right. in real life, we do this all the time. You do this without thinking. You go to the canteen and you've got $5 on you. And you say, how much is a can of Coke? Because you've also got two friends there. And if they say $1.50, you're actually solving, you know, 3X minus 5 equals to make sure you've got a positive number. If you're painting a room and you know a can of paint um, can cover 20 square metres of wall, and you know what your area of wall is, you're solving how many cans of paint you need. The, the, the amount of times we solve equations in our head or via other sources is incredible. We do it all the time without thinking. But this is now the formal mechanism that allows us to solve equations. And solving equations is one of the core fundamentals of maths. And it's a shame that it's not taught well, because um, I'd like to say that it's easy once it's explained right, once we, we do enough to get practice. And in my class, um, I'm a bit of a demon at it because I demand that students do this my way. And, and because I say, because I've got a goal that I want to get to, by the end of it and after the end if they want to do something else yeah they're welcome to but while we're doing this subject they're going to do it my way and and because that leads us not only into equations of being able to solve more challenging ones but also for um, being able to deal with algebraic manipulation because really anytime we move either side of the equal sign we do it as the opposite of what it was on the first side. It always goes over as the opposite. So if it's a times, it goes over as a divide. If it's a minus, it goes over as a plus. It doesn't matter which direction we go over the equal sign, but we always do it as the opposite. In a classroom, I would then extend it to brackets, paranumerals on both sides, bigger division, but I don't want to do that all in one go because yeah. that's just swamping you. But um, I'm more than happy to um, send that as a file and then you'll have access to that PowerPoint. Fantastic. So well, I, I think, think it, might be, it might be nice to just do a separate um, video of, of you talking through the PowerPoint as well. Um, yeah. I'd like to say on this one, just in terms of relevance to real life, if you've ever dreamed about being a scientist, being an engineer, being a, a, a a rocket scientist and anything um, uh, any kind of scientist and or even a nurse to work out um, to work out the amounts to give in, in the drugs um, the uh, even even a hair my <laughs> my niece was horrified to find out she had to use maths when she became a hairdresser because as a hairstylist she had to do the maths to work out the the, the different yep. amounts of things for, for hair dye um, and then the timings, of course, have different timings for different types of hair and whatnot. So, um, the, and the thing is, so they, this is useful in real life in terms of just becoming good at algebra. It helps you to, in those careers. And a little, little snippet there. 
did you know that people that graduate in mathematics, and I just mean pure mathematics, statisticians in particular, are some of the best paid people in the whole world? That yep. in high demand in the financial industry, and they actually are some of the highest earners in the world. So if you want to be a superstar and earn lots of money, becoming a mathematician is a really good way of, of making that happen. Interestingly, I didn't realize history as well. I didn't realize, I'm like, why history? History is actually um, comes not far behind maths because you do a lot of research and you do a lot of analysis and those are all the things that they want for in, in the financial world to um, yeah. help the companies make lots of money. Have you got anything to add to that that you know that so, I do? Um, well, it's, it's, there's almost no profession where mathematics is not there. Um, sometimes it's on the slide. We don't realise we're doing mathematics when when we are, and um, and you can go into economics and commerce and business management. It's all there. But um, you know, I, I got you to make a note. There was something that I, I wanted to leave you with as, as part of what I wanted to introduce, and it was the problem of imagine two children, and yeah, they really love each other, but there's a nice little chocolate small cupcake and there's only the one to share and some children are very generous but some are not some like the best for themselves and and these are two children like that and there's a knife and you know every time you've tried to do it not one but both of them complain that you've given their brother or their sister the biggest piece so how could you do it so that you guarantee that they cannot complain that they've got the biggest, the other person sibling has got the biggest piece? Do you actually know the answer to that, Caroline? I, I wait, I, there's one guarantee. If I eat it myself, then... then oh, yeah. they That's true. But no, if there's I, a I, way... The answer is not coming to me that they can both have it. So the way you do it is you go, for one of the better, let's call it sibling one and sibling two. And you go to sibling one, you may cut the cupcake, but sibling two is going to pick which piece. Ah, nice one. <laughs> now, you know sibling one's going to get exactly halfway. Do you know, um, we had this exactly last night with Lenny. He, taught, he gave a, a similar example, but and I didn't think about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice It's one. a really nice one. Nice. There is a twist to do it for three as well. I, I don't know what that is, but it's on a similar thing. So I, I really hope that, you know, that was the core mathematics that I wanted to show you for tonight. And, and for the parents, you know, I hope that this little taster... Um, should really give you more confidence. And, and there is a really big thing that I'd like to leave you with. I don't, um, I say, I don't care who you are and what you know or what you don't know. But sometimes when a, when a kid says, I'm stuck on this, just saying, well, explain what you did. Whether you knew it or don't can sometimes be enough for them to go, ah, oh, there's my mistake, and then it all comes out. So I reckon one of the best lines you could tell your students when they're working, if they're stuck, is, well, tell me about it. And, and if you don't know maths at all, feign interest, because just in there describing can be enough to get them over that hurdle of the unsolved problem, or the yes. wrong answer. If you're not interested in maths, be interested in your child, and then that would be genuine interest. And, yeah. and you might then develop a, an interest in maths when you realise just how much fun it is. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, so we're going to do more of these. So yes, you, it's been oh, a pleasure. Maybe we'll even maybe find a name for them. We'll find a name for, our, for our, these particular talks so you can, so you can search for them. But this is the first one. So if you've come across this one, congratulations, you found our very first um, YouTube live. And, and we'll be doing other talks with other people as well. But it sounds as though Shane and I will be doing many of these over the years. Yeah, we might have to call it Maths Down Under. Maths Down Under, love it. <laughs> I'm in London. 
with 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 Tower Bridge and Sydney Sydney Shane is in Sydney with the beautiful Sydney Bridge and um, so from my bridge to yours we don't have to pay to cross a man but we do have to play the congestion no you don't have to even play the congestion zone to cross Tower Bridge so there <laughs> all right lovely all right thank, goodbye thank everyone you so much goodbye see you next time oh and subscribe do subscribe <laughs> Uh, are we still on together or yep hold on we go the new youtube is is i'm oh I'm, I'm still on youtube hold on still on youtube this is the very first one sorry guys stop live stream youtube